Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm praying for these two people that can say louder amen. Whatever that is making you to be living beyond your potentials, wherever they are found in any area of your life, I command them to die this morning in the name of Jesus. As I command them to die this morning in the name of Jesus. The same Ark of Covenant that they brought into the house of Ebedodom, and within three months, he turned his story around, and people began to meet him, to get from him. It was the same Ark of Covenant that Usa tried to go and touch, and as a result of that, he died. I want to pray for you. Whatever the enemy has made a taboo in your family, if they have ever said, you know, in this place, people don't get to this height and people don't go this far. And you are about stepping ahead because I see somebody under my voice here this morning. In that height where they said you will not reach, you shall reach there in the name of Jesus. Therefore, anything they have made a taboo that is good, that is supposed to be bringing blessings and testimonies, and they have diverted it away from your household, including where you came from. I pray. As your amen is roaring like thunder, let it be diverted back because of you in the name of Jesus. Let it come back this morning in the name of Jesus. Already before we go too far, I can congratulate some people already. Because you are not just in ordinary service this morning. The way the Lord will be moving with us, you will discover that by the time we shall be rounding up, you know that your story is changing and it has changed. Therefore, permit me to release this word of decree over the life of three people. Just two words of decree. I pray by the mandate that establish the heavens and the earth. Any area of your life where barrenness is ruling, where barrenness is reigning. No, it's not only people that does not have children that are barren. If you don't have money, it's part of barrenness. If you don't have substances and resources that you should have, the person is also barren. Therefore, I decree, by the decree of heaven, any area of your life where you are experiencing barrenness, today, it shall come to an end in the name of Jesus. I say it shall come to an end in the name of Jesus. One more decree. Before we proceed, whoever that is working out to ensure that your garment of glory is torn, that is, they want to tear your garment of glory. I am less concerned, even if they have torn some of the people in your father's house, they have torn their own garment of glory. But hear this word of the Lord as a decree this morning. Any power that wants to tear your garment of glory, as your amen is roaring like thunder, we command such power to die in the name of Jesus. We command such power to die in the name of Jesus. I say we command such power to die in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this morning. The reason why some people used to go to place of prayer and place of manifestation of glory and they get testimony and never last in their hands because they lack enough fire and enough power to protect and retain what they have received. But I want to pray for you under this open heaven, and with the unction that is flowing upon our Father in the Lord, working on this ministry, that the enough fire and enough power that you need, that will make you to be able to retain the breakthroughs that God will release for you in this service. Receive that fire now in the name of Jesus. Receive that power now in the name of Jesus. We cover your lives and the entire environment with the blood of Jesus. Lord, as we go into your word, open our understanding. Minister to us by yourself, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. As you have your seat, God bless you. Sit down in heavenly places. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome in Jesus' name. And I told us that I'm here to make announcements. But before we go to that, uh, uh, as usual, I'd like to appreciate the platform given to us and the opportunity for us to be with us in the house this morning once again. And we want to thank our senior pastor here, in Absentia, and other pastors that are around. We want to appreciate you for this platform, and we pray, King of Glory shall continue to strengthen the church in the name of Jesus. Um, very briefly, let's look at the word of God, then we come back to pray. I said I'm here to make announcement, and that is all we are looking at. 
it is time of miraculous breakthrough. So that is what the Lord said I should come and tell somebody here. And you know, the Lord does not release his word without having the ability to fulfill what he has released. He releases his word and is able to perfect it. And when I was coming this morning, the Lord said, somebody is there, you will not only receive miraculous breakthrough. It's not going to be in that direction alone. You will receive it as miracles, then you will also receive it as breakthroughs. And it shall be permanent in your life in the name of Jesus. As usually being said, from great minds, they declare this one that where you are located sometimes determines the kind of allocation you get. So if you are located at the bottomless part, you will be getting what is remnant that they finish using up and they release to go down. That is what comes down. But most times, those people at up there, they get the largest percentage of ex expectation of any good thing that is coming in. Because the perfect gift of the Lord comes from where? Comes from above. And I want to pray for someone under my voice. If the last time you look at yourself, you find yourself in the bottom region, after this meeting, you will be among the people at the top in the name of Jesus. I said you'll be among the people at the top in the name of Jesus. Let's look at a few things. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, or you come with me to chapter 9 first. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I read verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Who is the Lord talking about? That ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good works. What we are looking at is that first part of it that says God is able to make all grace abound towards you. The kind of grace we are looking at is that miraculous breakthrough here this morning. Which the Lord wants to abound towards you. He has the ability. He can do it. And you know, to every time under the heavens and the earth, as written in the book of Exodus, let's see chapter 3, verse 1. To everything under the heaven, there is time and there is season. Likewise, there is purpose of everything found here. Then the Bible went further to tell us about the time to die, the time to be alive, the time to plant, and the time to reap that which was planted. The time to do, the time of good and the time of bad. Then he went further to let us know that if God that created evil has made and he releases his word and he says, the evil in each day are enough for that day. Such evil is not meant for you and I. Amen. Such evil is not meant for you and I. He has provided good for the day. Because the mercy of the Lord and his goodness, they are ever new every morning. And if they are getting renewed every morning, that one should be our portion. Not the evil that is found in each day. Amen. Then we go further to let us know that time is very important and is very essential. As the Lord said, he has his own set time. The Lord has set time. And you know, there is difference between set time and time. It can be your time, and it's not your set time yet. It can be a period. It can be your period, but it's not your time. The Lord, in His infinite mercy, revealed in His Word something is written in the book of Psalm 103, verse 13. Very important and popular passage there. He said, "This is a set time to favor Zion," and He said, "Thou for thou shalt arise and have mercy upon what upon Zion." For the time to favor us as well has come. Yet the set time has come. The Lord has a set time. Is it, you see that expectation from God, that your blessing you are expecting from him, your expansion you are expecting from the Lord, the breakthroughs you are expecting from the Lord, those goodness you are expecting from the Lord, the establishment you are expecting from the Lord, there is a set time for it. And the Lord has sent us here this morning. When I say us, I mean myself and the Holy Spirit. Because I will not release any word for you when he has not given that. And he has said that it is your time of miraculous breakthroughs. Therefore, I want to pray for you now. When the Lord will begin to bless people as we move further, your life will not be left behind in the name of Jesus. So he has a set time. He has a set time. And as a result of his own set time, he wants to do it at that time that his name will be glorified. You know, something is written in the book of Luke chapter, let me look at chapter 19. And he was talking about a particular man. He was talking about a man called Zacchaeus. The Bible says Zacchaeus was a man of a little stature. And he, was, he heard that Jesus would be passing that place that day. And as a result of that, he tried 
to see him. But he discovered that his stature will not allow him. So he has to climb a tree that is called sycamore tree. So when he found himself on the sycamore tree, then he, he waited there. So when Jesus was passing by, he called him. And Jesus heard him. Jesus said, come down. Because today, salvation enter into your household. Then Jesus said, okay, let's go to the house of Zacchaeus. People were asking. It's not yet time to go into the house of anybody. You didn't tell us why we are coming, that you are going to change your mind to go to the house of everyone. You know the funniest thing? Among the people that were working with Jesus, some followed him to Bethsaida. Some people followed him to Nazareth. Some people followed him different places. They followed him to Capernaum. But he has not gotten into the house of any of those people that were following him. They were just following him, following him. I'm praying for somebody under my voice. The Lord will make your house his own habitation in the name of Jesus. You know, after that time, some people began to murmur and began to say, Ah, Jesus, you did not tell us you are going to branch in the house of this man. And you know, when Jesus makes your house a house, everything, a lot of people that are looking for deliverance, people that are looking for salvation, people that are looking for healing, people that are looking for every good things, they become they now started looking at the house of Zacchaeus. They said, you are looking for heat. Go to the house of what? Of who? Zacchaeus. You are looking for um, deliverance. Go to the house of Zacchaeus. The house of Zacchaeus was never known before. But because Jesus stepped in into the place, it was now made known. And everybody that wanted every good thing at that time, they were referred to go to his house. I want to pray for you. As, it, as a result of your presence here, because the Lord has made up his mind to do the miraculous breakthrough in your life. As a result of your presence, I declare once again, your house shall be the habitation of Jesus in the name of Jesus. So when the Lord suddenly make your own house or your place his own habitation, every good road leads to your house. Because nobody will want to know what is happening there. They just want to know, you know, a lot of things happening around. Before people will look back and see what is really happening, they've already run out of the place first. And that is what we are seeing around everywhere. And as that happened in that particular passage that I just referred to now, people began to gather together in his house. And after some while, because salvation, the Lord said, it will enter that place. Salvation does not come alone. It comes with every good thing attached to it, provided by God. Long life, good health, and provisions. All the promises of God and all that he has said he's going to do. Everything comes with salvation. And when he's said to do it in your life, no power can stop him. And as he has made the declaration that is your time, you know, there is an expression that I would like to make now. If you are going to the hospital and you get to the hospital and you are given a particular appointment that come this also so day at a particular time, then you made up your mind that you will go. When you get there at that time, you enter. And they told you that you should wait. The doctor is not ready to see you. So you'll be waiting there. Exactly 12 o'clock, somebody stepped out and said, ah, sorry. Uh, doctor is very busy at this time. We cannot attend to you now, but very soon, we'll soon call you. You are still sitting there. Ten minutes after, that is 12, 12, 10. Another person stepped out and said, sorry, we have a critical issue now. The doctor won't be able to see anybody now. Just hold on. Very soon, we will call you. Then, 12, 20, the same thing happened. By 12, 30, another person now stepped out and said, uh, sorry, we are very sorry for all the delay and everything that we have caused you. Now, it is time for you to enter. Now, you now step in and you sit before the doctor. It's at that time that doctor is attending to you. Do you know what has just happened in that place? The time that men gave you, that doctor gave you, was that time, was that 12. But the time that God wants you to meet with him was that 12, 30 that have arranged divinely. That that is the time you are going to enter. I want to pray for somebody under my voice. Any power on assignment to change your divine timing. Or any power on assignment to alter your divine timing. I pray king of glory shall destroy them in the name of Jesus. The Lord said I should tell somebody your time has come. Oh, and no power can move that time anymore. No power can move that time anymore. In the name of Jesus. So when we are talking about breakthroughs, we are talking about enlightenment of his grace upon somebody. And we talked about advancement, we talked about improvement, we talked about a boost, we talked about an expansion, we talked about an increase. 
We talk about upturn. We talked about uptrend. We talked about upswing. We talked about betterment. And we talked about a, a ripening, something that is already ripe, and you are about to start investing it. You know, some people are under my voice. You are carrying what we call overdue, overdue time. Because your blessings and your breakthrough and other good things that God should have done for you, they are overdue. And they are still there, waiting until the day they will hear you cry and they will step out. But I want to pray for you. Almighty God shall strengthen your voice to call them out today in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord said I should come and induce some people in this place with Holy Ghost power so that they will be able to give forth and get their breakthrough. Somebody might not understand that, you know, when you see a woman that is pregnant and the person is there, and as a result of that pregnancy, the person could not bring forth. At 36 weeks, 37th week, 38th week, 39th week, and at 40th week, nothing happened. And they expected that the woman gave birth at 40th week. So um, the doctor will give two advice. It's either they give idea to go for cesarean operations, or they will tell the person that no, we have to induce the woman to bring forth the child. Amen. Then this particular time, okay, 41 weeks, 42 weeks, they waited again and nothing happened. So they have to induce the woman and after that time, the woman will be able to bring forth. Amen. Because that time was already overdue for that woman to give birth. Your breakthrough is overdue from manifesting. And those powers that are saying it will not manifest. I pray right now by the unction that established this ministry. They shall come forth by fire in the name of Jesus. Therefore, according to the word of the Lord, permit me to induce you with Holy Ghost fire in order for that breakthrough to manifest. Stretch forth your two hands on your seat. Stretch forth your two hands on your seat. Every breakthrough that ought to have entered your hand with the one that you have labored for and the one you have not labored for, that you ought to have received from the day they gave back to you till now, that is yet to manifest. As your amen is roaring like thunder, I command you to receive them in the name of Jesus. Recover them, 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 recover them in the name of Jesus. The Lord said, what somebody needs in this place to get the maximum of that breakthrough is the presence of the Holy Ghost in your life. But before we get there, shortly we are going to look at what to do. But you know, a lot of us, we are not qualified for breakthroughs. But the mercy of the Lord has spoken concerning us, even in the past. Even as the mercy of the Lord has spoken concerning us, in those breakthroughs are yet to see come into our hands. Some people are praying for you, praying hard, that King of Glory should make a way for you. But even in their, in, in their, in their groaning, where they are praying for you, nothing is happening in your life. What is wrong? If there is any curse, any covenant that have already attached anyone's life in this place to lack of breakthrough, I pray that such covenant is broken today in the name of Jesus. And if it's a curse, I decree by the mandate that is found in the name of Jesus, because the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. He said, wherefore he has highly exalted him, and he has given him a name. And the name of Jesus, every new world should bow. Of things in heaven, on earth, and under the head. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, I pray for you. That curse is broken in the name of Jesus. I said that curse is broken in the name of Jesus. No. They were these children of the Lord. If there is any power that is telling you that it is not your time of that miraculous breakthrough, I, I can assure you that they, they are just making mouth or they are just lying. Because what the Lord has spoken will surely come to pass. Yes, it, uh, he has declared it and it's because of you he has made that world. It, it, it wouldn't have been easy and would have been possible if you are receiving it, if we are not around. God will have sent another minister to come and do that. But he, 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 he channeled the path of his prophet, your path, this morning. Meaning that there is no power that can stop it. You know, I, somebody may not understand. I was telling pastor that, you know, I, I came in this morning with first flight into Lagos. And I almost missed the flight. 
and I've already assured that I will be here. And something happened. There was a divine intervention. And he said, no, you don't need to check all the necessary things. Let the person just go. So far, your name is on it. Therefore, go. And that is a confirmation for me that somebody is under my voice that your testimony can no longer wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Therefore, today, you shall receive your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I said, you shall receive your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. You shall receive your breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. All right, have your seat. Let's proceed a bit. In the book of this book of Numbers, chapter 27, you read verse 1 a bit down. You discover that the Lord talked about some daughters of God. Those daughters of God, they, the name of their father is Selophehad. So the, their names were not mentioned. But they just called them the daughters of Selophehad. Three of them. They were there and serving their father. But at the point at which their father died, in Israel, in those days, when a father died, and you don't have a male child, everything in the, in the land that you have as a man will be given to the government or the state will claim it. All. The state will claim all. But in the case of this Selophehad, when he died, the state men came and they said they want to gather everything that belongs to him. And the children were there. They began to ask themselves, but we have served our father diligently. Is this how we will be pushed aside and nothing will belong to us? Therefore, they said, ah, no, we need to pray. So they prayed and they heard the voice of God that says, it's been happening to others that way that they collected everything from them. But from you, they will not collect from you. That was what they heard. And so when the statement came again, they told them that, no, the Lord has instructed us that these goods and everything here belong to us, that you are not going to take all. So they went quickly back to the head of the land, which was Moses. And Moses said, okay, no problem. Let me see and confirm from God. They said they have prayed, and God has assured them. So he went to pray again, and the Lord told him, he said, Moses, hear this word. Who gave you the law? He said, God, you are the one that gave me the law. Who instructed you and gave you instruction for the land? He said, you are the one that gave me instruction for the land. Now, because of my daughters, I want to change the rule for this time. And the Lord changed the rules. And Moses got back and come and tell the people, he said, leave those goods for them because their own situation is different from other people's situation. And that is why I know your own case is a different case. Hear me and hear me well. In a miraculous way that the Lord stepped in and he changed the rules of the land for these daughters of Selophia. Almighty God shall appear and change the rule for your sake. In the name of Jesus. I say, it shall appear and change the rule for your sake. It shall appear and change the rule for your sake. It shall appear and change the rule for your sake. In the name of Jesus. Have your seat. The reason why the Lord is taking it a bit deeper and make it a miraculous breakthrough. Because a lot of people have been enjoying breakthrough, but a lot, a lot of people have not enjoyed miraculous breakthrough. The, the kind of breakthrough that you have explanation for is the major and is, is, a, is a kind of breakthrough that we talk about. But the one we are talking about that is miraculous, you don't have explanation for it. The way it came, you don't know. The way it eats you, you don't know. Somebody just approached you and said, oh, uh, you did not apply for this particular thing. And they are giving you the benefit. And somebody just appeared. He said, ah, I've been looking for God. Oh, God, which day will I be able to meet your miraculous? And I need you to meet me at the point of my needs. And you have been going for meetings, prayer meetings, different programs, prayer and powerful programs. Things are happening in the lives of others, but you are not seeing testimony. But all of a sudden, a particular day, when your hope was already going down, the Lord just suddenly appeared and he do something great in your life. And you look at everything around you and see the whole world is changing only to your own direction. Then you say, ha, ah, this one is a miraculous. I'm praying for somebody under my voice. The way that you cannot explain that breakthrough, it shall eat you in the name of Jesus. I said, it shall eat you in the name of Jesus. I said, it shall eat you in the name of Jesus. In one of my missionary journey lately, uh, the Lord, the Lord came and met with us in that place, and the Lord said, "I want to perform a miraculous." And when the Lord says He wants to perform miraculous, what we usually do is that we are happy. We have seen several of them, 
And I'm praying that if there is someone in this service this morning, your situation, all that it requires is the miraculous. King of glory shall attend to it before you go in the name of Jesus. And if you have any situation that you have taken to men that, God, uh, that men cannot attend to, bring them to God now. And you will see the Lord transforming those situations to become testimonies in your life. Amen. Amen. So please, if such situation is with you, note it. When it's time to pray, let us know. And King of Glory will give you testimony. So in that place, uh, I ran a program for three days. And I was sharing wonderful testimonies the way I've shared in this place in the time past. And I was telling them what the Lord has done and what the Lord is able to do. And I shared a few testimonies of three people that came out of the wheelchair. And after we finished, one of the pastors ran to me. He said, Pastor, don't share that kind of testimony here. Because in this place, they will come and try you. I said, ah, Pastor, I'm not the one they will come and try. They want to come and try the God of Elijah. He will answer his name because he never fails. Lo and behold, on that Sunday, we announced that a program will start the following day. So on the Monday when we are starting the deliverance program, they just brought the woman on a wheelchair, and they did not put the woman at the back. They just brought the woman to the front, 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 front. Then the pastor came and met me inside. He said, Pastor, I told you yesterday that this thing should not be so like this. Don't tell us, don't tell us. I said, they will try. I said, oh, if they have brought the person, they have brought the person for God, and God will surely prove his power. So the program continued and everything. So when I came out, I saw the woman at the front. And I shared more testimony of more wheelchair and crutches that God has taken away. And the woman, too, was listening to that. As a result of that, that she has listened to, her faith got strengthened again from the wheelchair where she was. And as the Lord were attending to everybody in that place during prayers, the Lord said, it is now time to do this miracle. So I picked the oil. I put the oil on the, her leg. I put it in her hand. The hand was already frozen. The leg. He said, he has one cancer at the back and is found in her bone. I said, I don't want to know where that thing is. What God said is that he wants to take you out of this wheelchair. So when she said, ah, okay, uh, give me, give me what you need to give me. We give her everything. Some people were with me in that place. Their faith were not strengthened enough. So the woman refused to get up. Then I began to ask the Lord, Lord, you said this woman will get up from here. The Lord said, now send for water. So I sent for water. I prayed on the water. I will use the water to wash the leg and wash the hand. Lo and behold, before we finish washing, the woman said, I'm feeling a strength in my leg and I'm feeling strength in my hand. And all of a sudden, the woman jumped up from that place and began to run inside the church. And that is why I know when the Lord is ready to do the miraculous, as he has said that he wants to do it in your life, hear this morning, hear this word of the Lord. If your amen can be louder than the person by your side, your destiny shall carry miraculous today in the name of Jesus. I say your destiny shall carry miraculous today in the name of Jesus. If, if all you need once again is for you to be connected to the miraculous, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is saying something concerning someone in this place. The Lord says you should stop weeping because He's changing those tables for you. That weeping now is going back to the camp of your enemies. And those that thought they are rejoicing over what you are going through, they are the one that shall be weeping and wailing, and you shall be laughing over their lives in the name of Jesus. So when he's ready to do the miraculous, you know, I've shared a testimony here before, and I would like to refer to it again. There is this particular man. I met him in a program somewhere in the North Central where we had a program. And the Lord said we should hold a program called the God of All Possibilities. So the man came for the program, and she was, he, he was a medical doctor. And he said he, he's not enjoying that field, that that is not the area that he wanted, that he wants to be dealing on oil well. He wants to be dealing on crude oil. So when he said so, I said, okay, no problem. Put it before God. Write it, and God is able to do it. And when he wrote it, as the program was going on, first day, second day, third day, he just called. He said, Pastor, I want to see you. I said, no problem. We'll be in church by this or so time. He appeared. He said, I've not seen this kind of God before. I said, what has God done? He's able to do all things. According to the book of that, Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27, he said, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything difficult for me to do? In verse, in verse 17, he said, Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth with thy great power and with your stretched out arm. There is nothing impossible for you. 
Now, when the man came, I said, what has happened? He said, eh, it's my daughter that called me this morning. I said, what happened? He said, the daughter called her that when she's schooling abroad, she happened to be a best student from one of Nigerian universities, and she was sent abroad for master's program. So as she was in her course, there is another daughter of a particular man from Qatar. And the daughter of that man was the best student in their land. When she now got a connection with this child in the same class, a child from Nigeria now was not doing better than this, than this girl. So the girl now called her father. I said, Daddy, somebody is here from Nigeria doing better than the way I'm doing. And the father now said, Who is the father of that girl? And the man that was a medical doctor that wanted to deal on oil well, that was the only link and the open door that God gave the man. And he said, the father said, let the daughter call the daddy that I want to talk to him. Then the daughter called her father here in Abuja. And from Abuja, the father now spoke with a man in Qatar. And he said, what do you need for this your daughter to be one of my daughters? She will still continue to be your daughter. But I just want her to be one of my daughter that I can sponsor and do every good thing for. And that was how the story and everything that the man was waiting for manifested. I want to pray for somebody that believes in this place this morning. The kind of testimony that will shock everyone around you. I pray that by the mandate of Calvary, you will carry it today in the name of Jesus. I said you will carry it in the name of Jesus. I said you will carry it in the name of Jesus. Somebody say it is my time of miraculous breakthrough. Obviously, let's share two more. Then we begin to pray. You know, that is what God can do. When he says, I want to do something, no power can stop him. You see, no power can stop him. I have experienced a lot and still experiencing more. And among the testimony I'm sharing from one place to the other, your testimony will so hard to it. Yes, I'm very confident in my spirit. And when I speak like that, the Lord has taken over. Amen. You know, we're at, one, at our international headquarters in Abuja, the international headquarters annex in Abuja, and we're in a program. And one of our AGOs came to visit. When the pastor came, so we're taking him around to show him a few things that were happening in the place and what the Lord had been able to do through his servants. And as we're going about, a particular girl of about 10 years, she just rushed into our steps and she said, Pastor, Pastor, I want you to pray for my, for my brother. He's, he's five years and he's not able to talk. And I said, ah, please, you can see that we are busy now. I'm taking my guys somewhere. Please, tell your mommy to bring you to our office when we finish service. I, we discarded them and I left. So when we are through with the service, lo and behold, immediately we finish prayer, we open door for people to start coming in for counseling. It was this girl that we saw. And said, okay, sorry, where is your mom? She said, my mom is around. She said, she's outside. They didn't allow her to enter. I said, go and tell our people to allow her to enter. So when they entered, the woman said, when the boy was a year old, he mistakenly um, swallowed a particular iron or a metal, and it caused defect in his speech, and he's not been able to talk since that time. And I said, God, what do you want us to do in this situation? And this woman because what made the girl to rush to us was she saw somebody coming out of wheelchair and she saw somebody dropping crutches and she saw another person, they bound the body, was loose in that place, was losing. And she said, you believe that God can do it? And I said, Lord, don't be embarrassed and disgrace us here. And the Lord said, now, tell them that this boy should be coming for prayer for the next five days, every day throughout this program that is starting tomorrow. And we pray for him throughout. On the last day, which is the vigil, they should come very close to that time. And I told the woman, lo and behold, they came the first day. They came the second day. On the third day, when they came, it was testimony they brought. The mother said, ah, pastor, it has happened. Oh. I've been trying your number since morning. It's not been going through. I said, sorry, when we are on a program like this, we don't, we don't usually pick calls. 
and so, so that we'll not be distracted from what the Lord has started doing. And the woman said, do you know the funniest thing, Pastor? See favor. Favor is already talking. When we were having money devotion in the morning, it was favor that said, everybody shout hallelujah. And it was the one that also shouted the hallelujah. This is what God can do when he's ready to do the miraculous. I need somebody to just raise up his or her hand in this place. The kind of unction and anointing that we bring a testimony, that we bring laughter to the mouth of everyone around you. I command your destiny to carry now in the name of Jesus. I command you to carry now in the name of Jesus. I command you to carry now in the name of Jesus. Shout, say, it is my time of miraculous breakthroughs. I have your seat. One more. Then we pray. We have seen several things of such and like that continue, but God never fails. He's always improving his power strong, and like he did this morning, and he said, I want somebody to carry the kind of breakthrough that is miraculous. Not just an ordinary breakthrough that people will see in your life and say, ah, we have seen people that have this kind of breakthrough before in our, in our environment, in our church. In our, in our place, in our workplace. But the kind that nobody has ever carried in that place before, I pray for you. If your destiny can carry it, as you develop this faith, I pray that your hand receive them in the name of Jesus. It was a call at home one day when the Lord said he wants to do the miraculous. The reason why I'm referring to this one is perhaps maybe somebody is online watching us. You don't need the presence of whoever that God is using. The presence that you need is the presence of the Holy Ghost. And I, I, I said a particular man called. When they put the call through, we pick call. I was watching close at home. That time I was not even married. So uh, one of my boys was staying with me. And I said, bring the phone. So I picked the call. And I spoke. It was one of the elderly person from our international headquarters that we related with, that we relate with. So the, the man I said, please, pastor, where are you? I said, I'm, I'm around. I'm in Lagos. He said, ah, pastor, there is a problem now, and I need you to quickly help us. I said, what is happening in that place? He narrated the story, and he told me one of the ex-governor of one Nigerian state was a bit down, and they have fired arrow of paralysis into the hand and the leg, and nothing was working in that body again. Even the family deserted, and they, they've all moved abroad. And they left the man there. He said he, has, he, he was there and he saw the condition. This is somebody that has helped him before. He cannot leave that condition and just go. That he needs to do something about it. That is why he's calling. And I said, please, let me quickly call you back to clean my hand and check the kind of prayers we are going to pray. So as I dropped the call, I asked God, God, what do you want to do to this man now? The Lord said, ah, son, all that this man needs to do is to confess all the wicked works that he has done. And that was all. He said, by that time, the man will be made whole. I said, okay, no problem. So I put, put the call through. And when I spoke with the man, the man said, uh, we've been asserting you. I said, sorry. Now, what the Lord is saying is this. Can I speak to the man? He said, yes. He said, the phone is on speaker. I said, now, give the phone to him. The Lord said, this man needs to confess all the evil and wrong that he has done. And you know, a lot of people fighting for a lot of political position in our world. They have done a lot of things. Then the man began to vomit a lot of things. It got to a point, I almost blocked my hairs because I, be, I began to hear a lot of things and a lot of bloodshed, a, a lot of wrong things that were wrong. I, when the man finished, I said, are you true? He said, I'm not true. Let me still try to remember some. He, he continued, he continued. By the time we finished, I said, are you true, sir? He said, it's true. I said, this is all that God requires from you. Immediately, he, fin he said, it is finished. The hand that was frozen began to come out of where it was. The leg that was frozen began to come out of where it was. And the man was totally set free. We were not there. We were not present there in that place. But the Lord did it. Likewise, a brother was dead. And they called that this brother is dead. Though. I don't want my brother to be taken to, Beria, uh, to mortuary now. They just announced he's dead now. And I don't want him to die. He said, ah. Well, what, what will God do now? We're on our way to River State, and we're even going by road at that time. When the person called, and we're praying in the vehicle, I said, brethren, this is what this person just said now. We need to pray. And we prayed in that place. Said, uh, we, the Lord now spoke with through one of us. He said, tell the sister 
that if, if she had water there, so we put a call through and we asked, sister, the Lord said, do you have a water there? He said he has water. I said, okay, let's pray on the water. So all of us, we prayed on that water through phone. Through phone. And when the water received fire, they said, pour it in the mouth of the, of the dead person. They poured the water on the mouth and the person came back alive. This is what God can do. When he's ready to do the miraculous, rise up on your feet, beloved, this morning. And I want to pray for somebody before we begin to pray. If only you believe, if only you believe, those level and those places they said you will never reach, in those places where they have even disgraced and sent you out, you will go back and rule there in the name of Jesus. I said you will go back and rule there in the name of Jesus. You will go back and rule there in the name of Jesus. Now, few prayers to pray, but the question now is this. As many of us that are here that are not friends of Jesus, we need to become his friend if we want to truly experience the miraculous breakthrough. And if we are a friend of Jesus before, he's rising and falling today, rising and falling today. Nobody needs to explain that to you. You know what it means. So you need to rededicate your life to God. Therefore, those of us in two, those two categories I've mentioned now, can we lift up our hands to the heavens as we pray? Let's close our eyes now and bow down our heads. Every one of us, the Bible says, for all have sinned and for sure the glory of God. We cannot continue in sin and expect grace to abound. Therefore, we need to approach the throne of grace for mercy. But those of us in those conditions, you can lift up your, two, your right hand to the heavenlies and say this after me. Say, Father, I thank you for my life. I thank you for the salvation of my soul. Thank you for your grace that has found me this morning. Have mercy on me, Lord. Write my name in the book of life. And grant me the grace to see no more. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray for you that the power of God shall be mighty upon you in the name of Jesus. And King of Glory shall continue to lay his mighty hand upon your life in the name of Jesus. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will not go back into your vomit. And King of Glory will deliver you from every chains of darkness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, every one of us, let's stretch forth our two hands to the front. I'm praying for everyone here, Lord, under this open heaven and the presence of the Holy Ghost. As many that need to carry power, to carry fire, to retain once again every good thing that you are going to start and do in their life today. Let them receive the fire in the name of Jesus. Let them receive the power in the name of Jesus. Let them receive the fire in the name of Jesus. Now, lift those two ends up. Lift the two ends up. Let there be perfect silence in the house. The Lord said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination and every item that resulted itself against the knowledge of God. I pray the power to pull down strongholds that are blocking you from reaching into your expected miraculous breakthroughs. I pray that you receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Now, please, let there be silence in the house. Leave the hands very well. Holy Spirit divine, we wait on you for just a moment. As many of your children that need the power and need the fire to retain, wherever they are, let it rest upon them now. Concentrate. Don't say anything. Just focus your attention on Jesus. I will call fire from here 14 times, and a lot of people will receive. Concentrate. Fire! That is it. 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 Somebody is receiving power to knock and open the door. Just concentrate. Don't say anything. Fire! That is it. Fire! 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 In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, you receive. Amen. Now, I don't know how big you want your own miraculous breakthroughs to be big. Stretch your two hands. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. And please, concentrate. Stretch it out. Father, the angels are signed for this time to give your children their own portion of these miraculous breakthroughs. Let them begin to step in and deliver into the hands of everyone in this place this day. In the name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now stretch the ends and shout this loud and clear. Say, my miraculous breakthroughs. My sister, you need to shout it louder than that. Somebody is just shouting, yet Almighty God is giving you the date of celebration. Shout it louder. Say, my miraculous breakthroughs. Wherever you are, come back now. In the name of Jesus, my miraculous breakthroughs. Wherever you are, come back now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Come back now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Come back now. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Amen. I stop us. It's not your time. We are going to pray that prayer again, but you are going to pray this one. Because somebody is standing by the front of another person that is praying here. And he's saying, it is not your time for this miraculous breakthrough. You cannot carry it now. You cannot carry it. They still want to continue to enslave you. They still want you to be a slave begging from their hands before you'll be able to do good things. Shout this loud and clear. Say, any power anywhere. Any power anywhere. Say no to my testimonies. Any power anywhere. Say no to my miraculous breakthroughs. You are a failure. Disgrace the power. Disgrace the power. La poke po si to kero andagabo shot up here. Disgrace the power. Disgrace the power. Disgrace the power. In the name of Jesus. Disgrace the power. Da 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 da. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Hello, sir. I know some people might be depending on you to survive. I have a direct word for him. But they should be more than that. Because the kind of destiny God gave you was to address and put more people up even as you go more a bit higher. Hear the word of the Lord today. Whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, powers in the foundation that are saying no to the yes of God in your life, I command them to die in the name of Jesus. Everybody shout this one loud and clear again at the top of the voice. Say, power that needs to die. You know, those powers are already saying, over their dead body, will you do well? Now, please, I need you to get mad in your spirit. Because they must die now. Say, powers that need to die. For my testimony to manifest. Right now. Da, 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 da. Come on, to die. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name, we pray. Amen. One more before you go back to that prayer. I got the revelation now that some people are sleeping even at the edge of their testimonies. Some enemies are trying to induce you to sleep. They are calling your name for goodness, calling your name for testimony, calling your name for breakthrough. You are not even hearing because they have made you to sleep where you should not sleep. This is a prayer that some people have prayed here before. It's a divine revelational prayer which you need to pray again. I don't know what is your name. My own name is James. You will shout your name louder than the voice of anybody around here and you will shout, wake up. Immediately you say, in the name of Jesus, all I want to be hearing is that, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. You, mu you must come out of that sleep. You must come out of that sleep. Your divine original cannot be sleeping. Where you, where you should be manifesting. Shouting loud and clear at the top of voice. Say, James! Wake up! Amen, amen, amen. My sister at the back there, you can do better than that. This is your own time. Before 7 p.m. today, 7 p.m., 7 p.m. today, a particular breakthrough will eat your destiny that will change your story forever. Shout the sentence! Wake up! In the name of Jesus! Wake up, 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 wake up! Somebody is waking up. Somebody is coming 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 up. Wake up, 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 wake up. Rakata parada bagaboshen topia lareba. Let te 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 te
Force Utopia. Wake up, 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 wake up. That sister is coming up. You are coming up, you are coming up. You can hear your name now. 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 You can hear your name. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Uh -huh. Very good, very good, very good. Something is sounding in your ear. It's because you're already hearing that your name. Because it is nobody's time but your own time of miraculous breakthrough. Therefore, shout this loud and clear at the top of a voice. Say, my miraculous breakthroughs. Whoever that is using weaknesses in the blood to attack good things in your life, as you shout, Amen, I command them to die. Say, my miraculous breakthroughs. It is now your time to manifest. Manifest in the name of Jesus. <laughs>